Not all the world's best restaurants are in world-famous cities or glamorous resorts. On the edge of the English Lake District, nestling at the foot of the fells, lies the picturesque village of Cartmill. It's nearly 300 miles from London. It has a population of less than 5,000. But it's home to a restaurant that can compete with the best that New York, London or Tokyo has to offer. With two Michelin stars and an array of other accolades. This is L'Enclume. At the helm of this Cumbrian contemporary classic is chef patron Simon Rogan. The restaurant means more to me than anything. I mean, it's my spiritual home. We've been here now for 12 years, and uh, we started off with a, a vision to go a certain way. All the, the hard work and the graft is, is now bearing fruit. L'Enclume is French for anvil. Simon has housed his vision in a renovated 14th century blacksmith's forge. Let's go, let's go, six carat lunch menu, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be another two after that. Yeah. Initially, the remote rural location, over three hours by train from London, was something of a challenge. I remember when we opened the doors to Long Claim, it was, oh my God, what have we done? We were struggling to do anyone during the week. We might do 15 or 20 people on a Friday and Saturday night, but that was the extent of it. We used to get people coming up from London at the weekend that had been stuck on the M6 for seven hours, and they were getting to us three hours later than they were meant to, full of rage and full of, like... It was tough. Now, they don't really care. They're just, they're just glad to be here. The restaurant isn't easy to get to, but its setting provided Simon with a perfect opportunity to innovate. Long Gloom just happens to be slap bang in the middle of one of the most amazing places for wild larder. Cattle, shellfish, um, everything I needed was here for the style of food that I wanted to, to serve. I decided to eliminate all foreign ingredients and, and try to, to make sure everything was Cumbrian. The, you know, we can't use, all of a sudden we can't use lemons, which uh, in a chef's toolbox is the most valued uh, weapon because there's nothing like being able to squeeze a bit of lemon juice to heighten and bring out flavours. So we had to find substitutes for all the ingredients that we were no, no longer going to be able to use. It took a few years to eliminate foreign culture and ingredients and to concentrate on what was important, and that was where the restaurant was, uh, and to connect to its surroundings and, and all these wonderful products. So the area is everything now. This is the countryside, this is farmer's land, this is pine chips. For somebody to be doing not classic French food um, and not pub grub, something very different, I think that was a struggle, it was a real struggle. The dinner offering consists exclusively of a 17-course tasting menu at £120 a head, which Simon has developed to showcase this local produce. He's been dug in for quite a while investigating the local ingredients and trying to make his food an expression of the landscape. And the landscape of the Lake District is very, very particular. And Long Clume is that very much regional restaurant which makes a virtue of its sense of place. You can't get that food anywhere else. Simon's hyper-local approach has paid off. And in 2015, Longclume was voted the UK's best restaurant for the second year running. 
My initial thought of being voted the number one restaurant in the UK was, uh, oh my God, uh, what can we do to improve things? And I'm thinking, well, actually, we've been voted number one for a reason. So what do we need to change? And with the accolades, the crowds have followed all the way to Cumbria. Uh, table 18, two covers, room 15. Table 11, two covers, non-resident. 25th wedding anniversary. Some people never get to celebrate that, ever. So just bear that in mind, bring it up, talk to them about it. Guests who make the long journey to Cartmel can stay in rooms at the restaurant, heightening that sense of a break from the ordinary. Once you've left one of the big cities and come here and see the, the difference, and again, I think that's really positive for our guests. You don't just get a guest eating, you get them away from their life. They're here, you've got them the whole time. Longclume in Cumbria has overcome its isolated rural location to become the UK's number one restaurant. For chef patron Simon Rogan, it's part of a culinary adventure that started as a young child. I suppose it all goes back from a very early age. My father was a fruit and vegetable salesman uh, in the dock, in the uh, fruit markets, veg and fruit markets in Southampton. And um, he would bring home things that we had no idea what they were. And uh, it was way back in the time when it was pawpaw and kiwi and um, star fruit. And they weren't even in supermarkets yet. And they used to sit in the fridge and more often not go mouldy because we didn't know what to do with them. And I think that's what, you know, ignited the, you know, the, the, the chef in me that, you know, made me curious. A career working in grand country hotels and classic restaurants followed, working for such celebrated kitchen icons as Marco Pierre White and Jean-Christophe Novelli. My career probably started properly when I opened the doors of Long Clume and I could finally do what I, what I wanted rather than have the handcuffs of being in employment. And what he wanted was to be simple. Simplicity, in my mind, is, is one step closer to perfection. Um, whether you ever achieve perfection, you know, that's a, that's a tough nut to crack. But, you know, you're, you're going um, a long way to achieving that by starting off with the perfect raw materials, and that's things, that's what we source uh, meticulously. To help achieve this, Longclume has something that few restaurants can call upon its own 12-acre organic farm. I think the food here has become a very naturally led uh, cuisine. Our quest for the perfect ingredients from our farm has led to a more simplistic way of serving them. The fact that we're growing ourselves means that we can utilise every part of the plant. So, you know, most ingredients, you, you have a stem, you have a root, you have a leaf, you have a flower. So we are able to utilise every part of the plant which you, you can't buy from any other supplier. And it also gives us our, our unique selling point as well, that uh, we're using parts of things that you know, people don't normally use. I, I, sp I speak to my grandmother sometimes and say, we're being, we're being really avant-garde, Gran, we're using lovage. And, uh, and she just looks at me like I'm, like I'm a nutter. You know, no, we're, we've been doing that since before the war, Sam. To help push the culinary boundaries, Simon has set up a development kitchen to work on new dish ideas. At the high end, you have to innovate all the time. You have to make sure that you don't just become some museum piece. The development of development kitchens of what they're sometimes called culinary labs seems to me the logical extension of that. The Development Kitchen is, is um, a facility to help us 
uh, use our ingredients in a really efficient manner. So when the ingredients are ready from the farm, we have to have the techniques and, and the method in place. So when the ingredient is harvested, we're ready to go and uh, the recipes are in place. So that means goat's cheese treated with liquid nitrogen becomes goat's cheese snow. Um, you, you push yourself to, to create new things that you, you would never thought were possible, really. I think it's to the benefit of the designer, generally, because it does actually give them a playroom in which to come up with delicious things to eat, and that's what it has to be about, doesn't it? Long Clume's development kitchen doubles as a chef's table, allowing up to six diners to try out new dishes before they land on the main restaurant's menu. I had six chefs from Yorkshire, and, um, and I think they'd been for a few, few drinks beforehand. In fact, they'd probably definitely been for a few drinks beforehand. And uh, it was halfway through the, halfway through the dinner, and uh, one, of them, one of them sort of leaned over the counter and stuck his finger in my sauce and went, oh yeah, what's that? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> did you really just do that? The location, the farm, and the development kitchen all feed into the restaurant's extensive and imaginative tasting menu. It's a way I like to eat. It's a way to showcase our ingredients. We need to have a long menu because we've got so many ingredients we need to use. Um, but, you know, I look at it as a journey. Most chefs in high-end restaurants are basically train spotters. They're obsessives. They love to get down and dirty in the detail, and they love to refine and refine and refine. And the tasting menus enable them to do that. It's the greatest hits factor. It's a way of saying, come to my restaurant. You don't have to do any work. You don't have to choose. I'm going to make you exactly what I want to make you and show you what I can do. When it's at its best, it can be a spectacular thing of rhythm and it can be a dance through flavours, sometimes to miraculous effect. It's about the whole menu, it's about the rhythm of it, it's about how it works to each other. You know, texture, taste, heat, you know, all these different acidities, all these different things are taken into account and every, it's, the journey, it's on that journey for a reason. There's individual incredible elements to this meal, but when you put them all together throughout a whole evening, it's, it's a night out. Delivering a menu of this complexity brings its own set of challenges. There's about 20 things that we will serve to our guests, um, which, with 50 guests, is a thousand things to give them over an evening. And then deliver them all with ease and never make a guest feel like they're part of a huge machine operation. There's so much going on around them. The guests, they want to see the effortlessness. They want to see the swan, but they want to see this elegant swan. They don't want to see the, the peddling underneath. At its peak, you've got around about 140 to 150 things going on for every guest coming in the restaurant. This was equating to around about one thing happening every two seconds. A meal lasts around three hours. During this time, Simon and his staff strive to ensure a guest never gets bored. We need to keep people interested. We need to keep it, you know, different. And, uh, you know, we don't want people falling asleep. You know, the pebbles from the local beach or the driftwood, you know, it's not a short experience, you know. So we try to keep it as interesting and fresh as possible throughout all the courses and give something different visual to the eye. If you ever look at guests in the restaurant, they're watching the room. The room itself is theatre with these many things going on at once. Madam, would you also care for some of the marigolds and the, the hyssop? Our tea trolley brings an element of theatre to the service, as does our, our cheese trolley. You know, they, they are theatrical in their approach. Against all the odds, Longclume has not just survived, but thrived. 
A lot of people said we wouldn't be open for very long. Here we are 12 years later, uh, for most nights and for lunch and uh, getting busier and busier. It makes me very proud. But I'm not finished.